I'm Carolina from Water Power Canada. Today, with the collaboration of Niagara Parks Commission, we'd like to highlight the positive impacts hydroelectricity has brought to the Niagara region, Ontario and Canada. Global Hydro Day will be October 11. It aims to highlight how hydropower has brought benefits to communities. And Water Power Canada is here today in Niagara Falls to do just that. Water Power Canada is a national trade association that represents hydroelectricity all across Canada. It advocates for responsible development and use of water power to meet our present and future electricity needs in a sustainable manner. Water power provides more than 60% of Canada's electricity and is the fourth largest generator in the world, ensuring that our electricity grid is one of the cleanest globally. I am here today with David Adames, CEO Niagara Parks Commission. Hi David, nice Welcome. to meet you. Welcome to the Niagara Parks Power Station. Well, it's great to be here. It's an awesome venue. So over the last two years, you've done an adaptive reuse of this historic gem. And tell me more about it, because I think this power station has a lot of history, and I think if you know the walls could talk, they would talk a lot. <laughs> so this was the first hydroelectric power generating station on the Canadian side of the Niagara River. So originally built between 1901 and 1905, it was the Rankin Power Generating Station. It took visionaries to build this and keep it running for 100 years. What can you tell us about the people who built this power station? So it was uh, uh, Rankin who built this station originally. Uh, it was uh, Algernon Bell was the architect. So they wanted to harness the power of the Niagara River. So this is a run of the river hydroelectric power generating station. So no dams here. Uh, so all the water that came in from the river came into the power station, down the penstocks and back out in the lower Niagara River after going out a tail race. So you can imagine uh, again at that time without technology designing this power station. What was the impact on the region and uh, on the province over the last century? How did the community benefit from this uh, power station? So it really led to the industrialization of southern Ontario and western New York. And you had to imagine too at the time that people had to be convinced to use electricity. So there might be appliances here in the power station that people would come and see and think, oh, I could take that appliance uh, into my home and use electricity to really make my life better. Today, a lot of hard work has been done and a new technology deployed to bring the power station back to life. Tell us more about what's been put into this and how it came about. So we've married up uh, the heritage of this building with creating a new modern attraction. Uh, so this, is, this tells the story of hydroelectric power generation, but it tells the story of science, technology and engineering. It tells the story of architecture. So people were just curious what was behind this industrial plant, now open as a visitor attraction. Uh, so we give guided or self-guided tours of the generator hall floor. We have a, an evening immersive sound and light show called Currents. And this year, in July 2022, we opened the tunnel or the tail race experience. So a new way of seeing the entire power station, how it worked. And what was the tunnel used for in the old times? So the tunnel was used for all the water to leave the power station. So after it had done its job of generating power, all the water that came in the upper Niagara River was returned to the lower Niagara River. So that really speaks to the sustainability of hydropower generation. Would you say that other countries could learn about the technical aspects of this uh, power station? Absolutely. So Henry Akers, who was uh, a key engineer, brought a lot of uh, innovation to this power station that was then leveraged at other power stations around the world. How will investment in hydropower today make lives better for tomorrow's generation? Well, as, as the world expands, we need different energy sources. So when you think about electricity itself, uh, so it's a very clean, sustainable way to make electricity uh, through hydroelectric power generation. Today, of course, we have the, uh, uh, the Adam Beck plant on the North Niagara Parkway, so still generating a, a lion's share of Ontario's hydropower. So it's very sustainable, as you can see. My last question to you is, what makes you most proud about working in the hydropower industry? As the environmental and cultural stewards of the Niagara River Corridor, the Niagara Parks Commission was immensely proud to open this new visitor attraction that tells the story of hydroelectric power generation. So to take the very first power station on the Canadian side of the Niagara River and now showcase it for generations of Ontarians to explore how hydro started, we're very proud to tell that story. Well, I was very proud and honored to have you today for this interview. Thank you very much, David, and much success. Thank you. Thank you, Carolina. As evidenced by the past and as discussed here today with David, Hydropower as a source of energy has been a primary solution to innovation, economic prosperity and the well-being of people and communities. It continues to do so today for the society and will continue to be there tomorrow to face challenges of climate change. By meeting the net zero emission and reducing our reliance on fossil fuel, sustainable hydropower has an invaluable role 
in the future energy system as clean, modern and affordable solution to climate change. On behalf of Water Power Canada, this is Carolina Rinfray. I'd like to thank Niagara Parks Commission for facilitating this interview and I hope you've enjoyed it. And please remember that water power is crucial to the clean energy transition. Thank you and have a nice global hydropower day and see you soon. Bye-bye.